Scattered Remnant Studio Ministry, Scattered Remnant Sunday, the whole live studio <laughs> congregation. I try to do that, you know, like ventriloquist style. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Sucked, that did not totally work out well this. at all, dude. <laughs> hey, fam, we're back. This is part two of today, but not part two of any other thing. Um, it's part something of oh, Bollinger's Bullinger. How to yeah. Enjoy the Bible. But um, <laughs> aside from that, we are part nuts. So, um, <coughs> but we're back. It's a scattered uh, remnant Sunday. And, you know, we try to bring as much of God's word to you as we can. In some form or fashion, we like to gear it in a principle study kind of way. So that's where we are. We've been that's working right. with E.W. Bullinger's How to Enjoy the Bible, um, which is basically just all spiritual principle. Um, how to apply it, how to understand it, recognize it, and use it. So Biblical you can research principles. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. It's Those a long book, so we're, we're trying to take as much time and any of the extra time that we have to get through the class. That's you know? right. So we are going to try to limit the time on this one, maybe like around 45 minutes to 50 minutes. We're going to try to. I'm going to um, pray in, but uh, before I do that, uh, we are on the page that we were on when we finished um, doing the uh, blessings and, and keeping with the word. Um, earlier. So what yeah. I'm just doing is opening up. We got the tablets up here. It's that button that Josh added. That's our books. We're going to go into books. We're going to scroll over with this little thing right here. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. Um, uh, we're here to Bullinger, how to enjoy the Bible. We're going to double click that bad boy. Now when that opens up, we're going to click OK. No, we're not. We're going to no, scroll yeah. down. You're to going to part, part one, the word. The one great object of the word is where we're going oh, to okay. start on this okay. one. Okay. One great note. I went way down. One great object right there. Okay. Uh, yeah, right there, Jay. So I'm going to click that. It's going to open it up. I'm going to open this up. And remember, you can toggle with your arrow keys and scroll and roll and all that good stuff. And but, stu studio member. The the iPad's right there as well if you want to look at that. You already know the password on that. And it should be on the page where we're picking up. No, no problem. All right. There's going to be just a, a slight and interruption look, we, here. We have our coffee boy. Bringing us coffee back. And and other member of studio. Yeah, and, and that's right. And another member of the live studio, man. live studio Sorry. congregation, like you said the other day. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, my dude. He's also our um, uh, going to be our future uh, audio video guy yeah. and tech uh, tech handler, whatever it is. I don't know what the word for that is. Anyways, hold on. But anyways, guys, get your stuff opened up and get ready to go. And I'll take us off in a, a little prayer here. You ready? Um, yeah. All right, let's go. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for getting us where we were going and back here safely, Lord. And we thank you for guiding every step um, that we put you in front of and that we allow you to guide because it is our choice. And once we put you in front of everything, nothing can stop us. We appreciate that, Lord. We love you so much for what you do in our life. We ask you guide our words. You ask you guide the hearts of the people listening and watching today to find you, Father. And uh, we just, we love you. We thank you for everything you do. Um, we ask you just bless this session and the people watching in Jesus' name. And uh, amen. 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 All right. Dude, I gotta say, okay, in that last I'm video, man, an applause I gotta, I gotta the, say, the man, you know, you're always like, you, you said, you know, you like, you love it when I pray, man, yeah. and you know, in my personal prayer life, you know, it's better than you know, doing it openly, like I you know, you and I don't pray together, dude. Like seriously, what's the problem with yours? Like seriously, like so, like you have some be like like beautifully worded, like real quick, like I. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Like seriously, like man, like wow. I feel like stumbly and like I sound like a, like a I don't know, like I'm I, like an idiot. I feel like I sound like an idiot. It just it's what's it's what's in me. Most of the time, I'm like, you know, bless them, set them on fire. You know, like let them set others on fire. That's that's just what's in my heart all the time. Like show me mercy, love me, let me set other people on fire so they can feel like I feel when I feel like this about you. That's all I think about most of the time. Like. Let's get him, Lord. Let's get yeah. him. Like I, uh -huh. it was last night. Thanks, was, dude. <laughs> last night I was messaging, being like, you know, Taco Bell, and I said, then I said I just accosted everybody with Jesus at Taco Bell. It was awesome. I said, then uh -huh. they messed up my order, so now I'm going back. I said, should I hit him again, Father? Question mark. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to hit him, and I did. I got him again. You know, a whole bunch of people, and it was wonderful, dude. Um, <laughs> Oh man! Oh, I, I the last time we I talked about this, I just kept saying that Mexican fast food restaurant. Yeah, that, we don't know about talking about no copyright infringement or intended nothing like that. It's been a but, long yeah. day. So all right. So 
But anyway, I wanted to commend you on that because I, I don't know. Thank I, you, brother. I, I like it, seriously. And I'm not like, you know, blowing smoke or anything like that. I'm being completely genuine and sincere. Awesome. Um, so here in Bullinger, how to enjoy the Bible, right? 12 basic principles for understanding the Word of God, right? Biblical research <coughs> requires work, okay? That's right. Uh, I know it's, it was a long introduction. This is probably like part four. And we're just Micro now getting into part, part one or something like that. Well, I'm going to try to maybe speed it up like that. I don't know. <laughs> if I can, man. Remember, you know you know how it was years of telemarketing. Dude, they That's did right. this to They did this to us, man. Man. Blame them for it, not me. Part one, the word. The one great object of the word. From E.W. Bullinger, right? So we're going to go ahead and start here. Now he's going to start getting into some meat of the book. Um, there's going to be a whole lot of word in here. Now in the online Bible one, uh, I'm going to be reading out of the book. Jay's going to be running it right here. We also have a PDF on the iPad over here. Um, they are, you know, all public domain files. Um, now on the online Bible version, they have been so kind, bless their hearts, to uh, put the hyperlinks in there. That's going to make it a lot easier for anyone else uh, taking, you know, reading along, following along, anything like that. It's going to make it a lot easier, mm -hmm. especially when it gets into, you know, some Greek and some Hebrew words as Dude, well. Dude, I clicked on the word word <clears throat> and it brought up everywhere that the word word is used in anything related oh, yeah, to the yeah. word of God but anywhere. That, in this but that was set. cool because it, yeah. we looked at it and it was the combined so system much. dictionary. That's, That's right. right. So, it, so it pulled on online Bible verse themes, all the dictionaries, encyclopedias, you know, uh, name is topical Bible. It pulled from all that and gave us one big compiled list that we could just choose from and hit the air, you know what I'm saying, and float over and it would pop up. So these are great functions that we don't have to have all these books for, you know, that someone built into the online Bible. Let's go ahead and get us into this though. So the first great and essential principle, which must be ever present with us when we study the word of God as a whole, is not to treat it as something which we have to interpret, but as being that which God has given in order to interpret himself and his will to us, right? Not for us to guess at, like we talked right. about, but there's no guesswork needed, knowing that there's no prophecy of the scripture given of any private interpretation. Right. We let the word speak for itself, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, and our audience members, I believe, are supposed to have their phones on silent right now. <laughs> um, and even, but, okay, so Bullinger continues, but, it, but as being... <laughs> but as being that which God has given in order to interpret himself and his will to us. Uh, one, this applies to Christ as the living word. That's right. When we speak of the word in quotation marks, we can never separate the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the written word, the scriptures of truth. Why? For each of these is called the word because the Greek word logos is used of both. So this is a very simple statement he makes right here, the Greek word logos. He ties together with one word, okay? One single word, the living word, the written word, you know, and Jesus Christ, right? Spoken word, living word, written word. It ties them all together with one Greek word, logos, right? Okay. But he's going to go on further, as we're going to see, and he's going to tie them on even further with subject matter, with structure, all these different ways, because we just letting the word speak for itself about a certain subject, right? right. So he, uh, we keep going on. Logos means the spoken or written word, because this is the word, right? Considering what the, like the word. Logos means the spoken or written word, because it, the word, makes manifest and reveals to us the invisible thoughts. It's the word of God that's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? God reveals things about life, about people. Like the more you know of his word, the more he can reveal to you in the world around you as well. You that's know right. what I'm saying? People's hearts, like thoughts, intents, all these different things. And it all comes from the word. Jesus Christ did it being the living word, or, you know what I'm saying? The word made flesh. The written word does it. The spoken word does it. God, whatever makes manifest is light. And all that light originates from God. And it's used, logos, of Christ, the living word, because he reveals the invisible God. No man hath seen God at any time, the, save the only begotten Son, he being in the bosom of the Father. This one hath declared him God. This one, Jesus Christ, hath declared God. John 1.18 It is not that we have to explain Christ, but that his mission is to explain God to us. He interprets the Father, and we have to believe him. The word declare in John 1.18 is important in this connection. And deeply interesting. You might want to open it up here in the Greek, maybe possibly, Jay. In John it, 1, 18? Yeah. It is from uh, ek, which means out of or forth, and 
I don't read Greek. Just some what dudes, word right? Are we looking at here. Uh, we are looking at declared. Hit the S. There you go. Declared 1834, right there. Hover. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because it's a compound word. See the 1537 and uh, 2233. Yeah. So okay, so let's go. Just leave that. Leave your box floating right there. Okay. Yep. So um, where were we right here? The word declare in John 118 is important in this connection and is deeply interesting. It is from two words right here. The two words, the numbers 1537 and 2233. If you look those two up, that's where he's going to mention here because he was working from Greek texts and things. We're working from a computer program, okay? Still the same words. Uh, it's important in this connection, deeply interesting. It is from ek, the first word, which is out of or forth, and hegemai, hegeme. Whatever I'm, I I I speak and read English a little bit of Spanish just some dude. <laughs> and that it means to lead. Hence the whole compound verb means to lead forth, to make known, to guide, interpret, unfold, reveal, and expound. What does the online Bible say right there about that one word, Jay? Um, I don't know. I'll go off that. Just get off the hover. Now we'll go back. I was trying to read go, that man. word that you butchered just a second ago. What I'm sorry. What <laughs> hold on. To lead out, I want to compare his word. Yeah, hold on. To lead out, be a leader. Go before, metaphorically, to draw out in, ah, brother, in narrative. Slow with the mouse, man. Slow with the mouse. Uh, let's see here. Narrative unfolded teaching. That would be like to open up where he says, um, to make known, to guide, to unfold, to reveal. The things relating to God used in Greek writing, the interpretation of things, sacred and divine. It has a little bit more, you know, probably because of the other usages and they just compiled it for this. You know what I'm saying? Where our technology, you know, we weren't, we're not using old scrolls. But it's from this verb um, that we have the cognate noun, exegesis. Am I still on here or can I go back? Um, he brings up Luke 24, 35. That's going to be the other usage of that one word right there. Yeah, there. exegesis. Just, yeah, just stay right there. Exegesis. Exegesis? 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 What, which means exposition. Wyclef refers to it as he hath told out. The best meaning is to make known. Right? So he makes known the Father. That's what the Word does. Jesus Christ does it. The written Word does it. Right? This word, if we can, where, oh, that's a footnote. The word, I should have just looked at the book. The word occurs only in Luke 24, 35, John 1, 18, Acts 10, 8, um, Acts 15, 12, 14, Acts 21, 19. Hey, I got them right. Um, who knew? All yours, all Raymond uh, Yeah, that? dude, in the book, it's all like, especially like, well, if you look, if you look in the companion Bible, it's like that all the way through how he numbers and like structures things. It's all Roman numerals, uh, numbers of different sizes, man, different fonts. It's once you understand how he lays it out and start like it, you know, you almost have to like take time just to understand like basically the keys to it, like lines and structure and like, you know, all the little symbols he uses on how everything's marked. Next page. Yeah, he's so just intense. Um, this is why Christ is called the Word of God, because he explains or reveals God, because he makes known, reveals, and explains the Father. This is why the Scriptures are called the Word of God, because they make known the Father and the Son by the Holy Spirit, the author of the Word. We have many writers. We have one author, right? Okay. Christ is the way, in quotation marks, to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life, is what he says, right? He makes known God to us in all of his attributes, will, and words. I have given them thy word. It is always thy word. Um, here he cites John 15, uh, what is that? Seven, John, John 17, 8, 14, and 17. Uh, and then number two, in like manner, the written word, the scriptures, uh, there, the scripture is given in, in order to interpret and to testify of Christ. 
And this is why we shall see as our next essential principle, Christ is the one great subject of the word because Christ is all the way through from Genesis to Revelation. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, and you can't separate the living word from the written word or the spoken word because right. they all came forth with the same origination point, which is God. And realistically, there's always a reference to Christ, the person, you know, the that, coming exactly. of, that's you know, a, that. That's exactly there's right. There's always a reference to that in, in every book. That in every, in, That's right. All, like every, all of them in the Old Testament, they all looked unto his first coming and saw his day. You know, they saw the Lord, sit, my Lord sitting at my right, or sitting at the Lord, uh, God's right hand. You know, they all looked unto his first coming. And now us, we look into his second, you know, the entire, the entirety of the human race, historically and future tense, all are contingent upon Jesus Christ coming the first time and then the second and fixing everything, you know what I'm saying? And restoring it to the way, way it really should have been, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But still, Christ is the one great subject Not of really the word. Not fixing, but fulfilling plan. Sure, but you know, yeah. but really, but still. Yeah, setting setting things yeah. aright. This is why the Holy Spirit is the interpreter of both and is why it's also required because the Spirit of God that reveals the things. His mission is to glorify. They always say His. We're going to have to get into that a little bit more in uh, the pronouns. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue. His mission is to glorify uh, is to glorify Christ. John 16, 14. He receives and shows the things of Christ. This is talking about the Spirit of God. Uh, whatever it hears, like Jesus Christ said, whatever he hears of the Father, that is what he spoke. He heard it via the Spirit of God. Right. So he had what was required for God to speak to him, for God to, you know, for him to hear the voice of the Father. He had like a cell phone. He had that, you know, he was on God's network. God could, you know, place that call to him and he could hear it and then deliver that mail, you know. Um, and it shows the things of Christ. He receives and shows the things of Christ. John fourteen twenty six. But he shows them in the written word. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 14. And this is why it must be he and he alone who enables us to preach the word, the spirit of God. It enables our, it enables, it enables our gift ministries, the word, the spirit. You know what right. I'm saying? It's, it's, that, it's that spirit that, that dwells in us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What's in us? The spirit of God that we, right. that we receive upon the, the point spirit. of salvation, right. right? That's right. And it's greater than the spirit of the world. This, you know what I'm saying? So still we have that within us. It's, it's the spirit of God that we have within us that God uses to, enables us, to enable us to, to engage with his business, right? On that plane, on that level. That's what it, takes, it takes the spirit of God to do that. Thus, we have the word. That's the iPad, oh, bro. What is it? Um, I'm sorry. We're going to have to pause. And we're back. And sorry we're about back. that. Life happens. And, well, you know, we're parents. So, anyways, everything's fine. Yeah. Don't every, worry. Everything's completely fine. Automated calls. Back to things. the show. So, thus, we have the word in three manifestations. The incarnate word. Jesus Christ being made, you know, the word of flesh, right? Or the word made flesh. The living word, right? The incarnate word. The written word. And the preached word or the spoken word. There is no other. Christ reveals the Father. The scripture reveals Christ. The Spirit reveals both in the written and in the preached word. 1 Corinthians um, 12, 7, and 8 right there. And the word says what? But the manifestation of the Spirit is to get is given to every man to profit with all. That's right. Everyone that has the Spirit, it's in full measure for all of us to profit with all of it. For to one, one manifestation or one prophet is given, is, these are different functions. By the Spirit is a word of knowledge, word, a word of wisdom by the same Spirit. Just different functions. Or else God's a respecter of persons. And then, right. you know, it would contradict us, but it's not, but it doesn't say that. The Spirit is given every man to profit with all. For to one what? For to one prophet of that Spirit. One function is given this way. The English really doesn't do it justice, you know what I'm saying? And so you sort of start comparing it and looking at it and keeping it in advance, you know what I'm saying? But it's still the, it's still the spirit right there, right? And we're going to continue on. How wonderfully does this magnify the preached word and show the solemnity of the charge in 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word. And it shows how small and worthless are all the schemes, tricks, Contrivances? Contrivances. Yeah. Contrivances. 
Use the is the dictionary on right now? Uh, Look over here on this on. one. If I go over here and do what? Go to this. Uh, go to right this monitor. Right click and what? No, go to the go to the left monitor. It might not even be on. Go to the left monitor down there. Um, hit the arrow. I don't. You guys watching can't see this. Um, so it's not on right now. So go click start over there. And let's look for. <coughs> I am using a free dictionary. You guys can find it online. It's called Word Web. Hit all programs, Jay. Or do it that way. There you go. At the top. That one? Yeah, hit that one. Now when it comes up, it, it's, it's cool. It runs in the background. So what you're going to want to do is uh, you're going to hit, uh, what is it? Hold control. But it, see, it might pause it though, dude. So you only want to pause, like open it up. Like down there from the arrows, over there. Hit the arrow. Go to go to the icon. Right click on the icon. I don't know what the icon. Is. Right there. Oh, okay. Right click on the icon. And show Word Web at the top. There. Drag it over there. Oh, you're, you're supposed to go there. Try, yeah. Well, it's not. This so, there is you go. Word Web. Now type that word in there. C o n t r i v a n c e s. Or just some dude. A device or control is very useful for a particular job. If I, oh, contriving. But one, basically, it's like human skill and being deceptive with like $5 words and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Of present, yeah, the contraventions of present day evangelists and mission preachers with their ever new fashions and modern methods when we see what a high and dignified place God has given to the preached word. What does the word say about that? You know, it says the words, God says, like in the word, it says that there's one thing that God's magnified above his own name. It's his word. That's right. Yeah. That's his right. own word has God magnified above his own name. He puts his own word on a pedestal above his own name. You know what I'm saying? So like here, here's my word. You know what I'm saying? He gives, it has such a high and dignified place. Like Bullinger says right here, we don't need anything else. The word gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater, man. It gives us comfort. It gives us strength. It gives us promises. You know what I'm saying? It gives us guidance. It gives us it all. God gives us all things that pertain to God, life and godliness through knowledge of him, through his word. We need anything else. There's none of these modern contrivances, con whatever that word is. Contrivances? Yeah. Contrivances. 2020. Thank you very much. Audience member, too. Thank you very much for that one. Um, let's see here. Um, ever new fashions and modern methods. We see a high dignified place where God's given the preach word. How careful should we be that nothing in our manner or matter should lower that dignity or imply in the slightest degree that the written word has lost any of its power or needs any handmaids or help means. We don't, we can't say because all oh, because it's 2023 that no longer applies. No, it still does. You can't say that's old and outdated. No, I'm sorry. It's more up to date than tomorrow's newspaper. You know what I'm saying? God's word is 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 more living than us. It will be here after us. It will be here, you know, heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall not pass away. You know, it's going to outlast the heavens and the earth. It's the only thing that really is alive and, you know, is exists that way because it came forth from him. You know, and you continue on page nine. Bing. I have given them thy word. That's what Jesus Christ said. And that is like Jesus, or he says here, I've given them thy word is the all sufficient assurance of the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to the father. He did not say I've given them aids to devotion. He did not say I have given them a hymn book where I've given them thy word and something else. He did not give anything instead of or in dish or in addition to that word. And that being so, <clears throat> excuse me, we are assured that the word which he gave in he gave is all sufficient in itself to accomplish all the purposes of God. Comes out of his mouth, it's gonna it's gonna perform that which he sets it forth, like he says in Isaiah, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna go out and he, whatever whatever his purpose is with it, it's gonna accomplish that purpose with with or you know, we we can't stop it. That's right. No matter what. That's right. There's nothing we can do against the truth, right? We can do nothing for the truth. We, we can, we're only for the truth. You know what I'm saying? We can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. Right. No matter what, it's always for the will of the Father, no matter how it goes. Um, the word that is preached makes known the written word, and the word that is written makes known Christ, the living word. And Christ makes known 
God our Father. He interprets that and expounds upon that. You, please, my dear brother, pick it up on three. The living and the written word. Right here. Hence. Mine starts hence. Yeah, there you go. I'm just giving the header, man. Okay, three. my bad. Oh, see, the book doesn't have that. <laughs> the book goes uh, right after where it says... And Christ makes known our Father. I don't care about your book. I got technology. I'm just saying. I've got uh, this is three little <laughs> eyes, and then hence it is I'm that the same around thing. With technology. But you're right. It's okay. Keep going. <laughs> it is that the same things Excuse are me. stated of both the living and the written word, as it is well put by Joseph Hart. The Scriptures and the Word bear one tremendous name: the living and the written word. In all things, are the same. This may be seen. By noting carefully in our reading how precisely the same things are predicated, predicated, of both the one and the other. Predicated. Now I know what Sorry. it means. I just okay. I was making sure I didn't say predict no wrong because I'm an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I have a mind of Christ. We give a few <laughs> by way of example, similar. Uh, I love you. Dude. Similar predicates of Christ and the Scriptures. His name called the Word of God in Revelations 19:13. They pressed upon him to hear the word of God in Luke 5. 1. That's right. Hold on. So, so right here, what Bollinger's doing right here, he's oh, laying there's a out. whole bunch of them. So go, you know go back up. So what we're going to do, if you're looking in the book or whatever, if you're using the digital file, if you're going to look through here, there's all, he's going to start just laying out things right here. Okay. So we're just going to like jump. We're going to look at a few. Go back to the top, Jay, right there, where it talks about right there, the, his name. His name's called the Word of God, right? And he cites Revelation 19, 13, right? And that's what it says. It also says the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? Was Jesus Christ, right? And what did they do? They pressed upon him, Jesus Christ, to hear the Word. When you look at the Word all these different times by all these different writers, hundreds of years apart, thousands of years of apart, you know what I'm saying? Every one of them, no matter what, the author was always the same. The writer mattered not. You know, other than his obedience and being willing to write down what God was telling him. You know what I'm saying? But across all this different time period was Jesus Christ. Like here, his name was called the Word of God, written by John in, 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 in Revelation, right? That's right. And here it is in Luke. And they pressed upon him, Jesus Christ, to, to hear what? The Word of God. And what do you say to God? I have given them thy word. Like right here at the beginning of that page on page 9. Like, boy, like you know, we were, he was citing that. Where Jesus Christ said, I've given them thy word. They, and we keep going on. Uh, Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace in Isaiah 9, 6. That's Old Testament. That's hundreds or, you know, I don't even know how long between Isaiah 9, 6. And he, Jesus Christ leaves us the gospel of peace and leaves us his peace because he goes on to the Father, right? Hundreds, thousands of years apart between those two, right? Jesus said, no man cometh unto, unto the Father but by me in John 14, 6. In uh, Psalms 119.35, the psalmist says, Make me to go in the path of thy commandments. What's the path of thy commandments? No one goes to the Father but by him. And then in John 14.6, Jesus Christ says, He is the way. And he is the word. Right? So here, like, all Bullinger, like, the, just all, all, the only thing that's happening is allowing the word of God to speak for itself. To substantiate itself. Looking at itself for its own authenticity. not go, You know what I'm saying? Not going anywhere else. Like, well, the word says this here. What does it say here? What does it say here? What's the word say about this? You know what I'm saying? And then he's going to go through all of these different places right here. You know, I am the truth. Where Jesus Christ said in John 14, 6, the word is truth. I give them thy word. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ is full of grace and truth. The law, the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by one Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? So Bulger's going to go through and he's going to lay all these places out and let the word speak on all these different, you know. We go through here. Um, I'm going to go on to page 10. You're in control of that, whether you have your puppy or not. I don't know what not. page I'm on. Mr. Navigator. That's, that's still nine, I believe. Scroll down to the bottom. I just went to the next page. Okay, so the top of the next page should start. These things, these saith, things he. saith he. That's is right. That, that is 10? true. Okay. Um, and then the judgments are the Lord are true. So the things saith he that is true. So who said who said it that's true? The Lord said it. That's right. Right? And well, and the judgments of the Lord, so the things that come forth out of his mouth and decreed and weighed are true. Between Revelation 3, 7 and Psalms, eh, what is that? 19.9. 19, 19, 19, 9. That's yes, what I was going to say. Yeah. Jesus Christ, this is the true God in eternal life, holding forth the word of life. He held forth the word of life. Always giving the word of God. 
You know, um, in my book, I have marked out. I really like. Uh, I'm the living bread. Uh, and John, uh, what is it? Six fifty one and Luke three four. I'm the living bread. And if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by, but by every word of God. Or like I think it, like we were talking earlier, I think it does come from like the Where Old Testament. I'm um, still on that same page right there. Yeah, I was just because I have it marked. Oh, right here. You're yeah, in my book, I was like, man, I was like, I love that man. Or like um, <clears throat> on uh, on page eleven, there's a good one there. Like we, you know, I want ten. I we do we do encourage you guys to do research on your own. That's how you get to know God is knowing His Word, um, you know. And when you compare, like the way it showed you, you know, Hebrews, Psalms, that's right. Psalms. These are all examples of how this is. It's all it's all backing each other up. That's right. It's and all it's like, showing you that what it means is what it means. It's saying and backing up all these different people. That's right. All these different accounts. All these different times. All this stuff cohesive and 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 supporting each other. It's that's right. It shows and he, how perfect the word is. And at the same time, we also we don't. We want to encourage people to feed themselves. We that's all important. We, we don't want we, that's that's exactly right. Yeah. It's not my job to teach anybody the word of God from beginning to end. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's my job to, you know, feed myself, feed my children, feed others to the best of my ability as right. God as God, you know, as he Lead gives me as, as he leads and gives responsibility to, to do that. That's exactly right. But it's better to, you know, like like there's that that saying Give a man a fish and he'll eat for exactly. a day. But if you teach a man to fish and he'll, you know, exactly. feed himself forever. You know, and that's what it comes down to. Like when I was taught, I wasn't taught, you know, the word of God. I wasn't taught Genesis to Revelation. I was taught here's principles, you know, get whip cracked, you know. Yeah. I wasn't taught the easiest. No, you weren't. You didn't not. have much mercy. No. And, but the thing is, you can go set in a building one day but a week what, and feel good at the end sure. of the day. Or you can go fish for yourself and have a relationship every with God. single day and feel this way every single day and apply it all the time. Like, you know, and it's great to go to church. I'm not saying don't go yeah. to church. I'm just saying don't you sit in a seat one day and hear what somebody has to say. Or you can find out how yeah. that dude is getting that message that he delivers you one day a week. And you can fill yourself with the Word of God every single day. And then when you go to church, you're not just filling in a seat. You're helping somebody next to you because you're you're not afraid to Let's step out. You're not and afraid to speak out. The word and the word says, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God doth man live. Right. That's, right. That's what Jesus Christ answered back to Satan right when he was out in the in, in the wilderness fasting. You know what I'm saying? So and he was citing Old Testament like I'm like Jeremiah or something. Think about that for just saying. Just hit me. What happens if we only eat once a week? I know, like, on certain diets and things, you know what I'm saying, to speed up the metabolism, that's, you know, kind of needed. Intermittent but, you know, fasting. Intermittent whatever, fasting, sure. you know what I'm saying. Sure. But, you know, even spiritually, like, you know, we did our little fast or whatever, you know what I'm saying. And, but if you only eat once a week, one meal a week on one day a week when you're supposed to be eating, like, three, right. you're going to be real weak and frail. Like, you're not going to be properly or nourished even consider or anything a like that. Meal, like that's food, right. beverage. Thy words were found and I did eat you would them. Die. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, yeah. right? Or Jesus Christ said, you know, he that believeth on me, like, he, you know, he's, he's not going to thirst. He, he, you're going to be fed, you know, but you have, to, you have to feed yourself with the word of God. It's, and by doing so, it enables you to have a relationship with him. You can't be looking to the man on the podium or something like that, you know, all the time to keep you spiritually fed. You have a responsibility before God. Man does not live by bread alone, right. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know, no matter what, some of us get some of us get up in the morning. Some of us have inconsistent schedules. You know what I'm saying? Some of us get up in the morning and put put the word on in, in the morning before you go to work. Some of us, you know, more like me, I'm more of a you know evening, personally yeah. because you know domestic responsibilities and whatnot. Man, like my schedule's not like what it used to be at all. You know, so like my downtime for things is you know in the evening time. You know, but still yet at the same time, I'm still, I still try to feed myself as best I can. And that God's word, will, it, it reveals the father, just like how to enjoy the Bible, like Bollinger's saying, like, because that's what the word says. Yeah. It reveals the father. It enables us to have a more, uh, a greater relationship and a deeper understanding with him, you know, but we have to be able to feed ourselves. And that's why it's so important to yeah, be able to absolutely. do so. And, like, even if you continue on, there's another page of, uh, of it on here, um, of him laying things out right here. 
Uh, in John, on page 12, I don't know what it is on you, on the, but uh, one of the next... Uh, First word is begotten by... The yeah, the very, the very next one, I really like the next one. The Son quickeneth whom he will, cited from John 5, 21, yeah. right? The Word hath quickened... Thy Word hath quickened me. Jesus Christ became a life-giving spirit, right? Quickening spirit, became a quickening spirit, right? Yeah. It's the Word that quickeneth, the, the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. You know what I'm saying? And like it's just it's beautiful whenever you start when you, you know these like all these different like little pieces you know and then you start like just letting the word speak and things just like start clicking and you start seeing the perfection and you're like wait a minute how did this even these things are hundreds of years apart yeah you know and you but you start seeing the perfection in it like down to like the most minute details. Like, you know, and it just gives you more appreciation, you know, for even the world around you. Because you see, like, you know, you see the Word of God down to precise details. And you see the and world around detail, you the but same it's not, way. But it's not word for word precise detail because then it would be unbelievable. If, it's word for, if a yeah. bunch of people walked into the police station and said, hey, this is what happened. And everybody no, yeah. it said the exact same thing. Guilty. That's a lie. You guys made that up. Yeah. But it, it's so, and it's not like that. It, it, it the precise details there, but it's all the way through right. the word. It's Building subject matter. Of one or That's another. exactly right. Speaking of it this way, and another account from another person's standpoint. Scriptural buildup was that one word there we were talking go. about before. There that you M word you couldn't remember. <laughs> remember that? Um, no, that was a day I was trying to think of the word theme. I know, and you're, I know. I was just making fun oh of you. That, M that, word. that M word I couldn't remember was like theme. <laughs> I know, when I read that, I got it. It was a huge laugh. You're not, dude, but, I, but it was good, though. It cracks you know, me like, up. I do that all the time. I'll be like, I swear their name starts with an R, and the name will be like Sebastian. <laughs> but we have to let the word speak for itself. Um, what we are going to learn as we continue on through, through this class of how to enjoy the Bible, right? But we are going to learn. Uh, as how the word interprets itself to dispensational truth, adheres to whom is written, how things change. Just like we talked about in the teaching earlier today. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. Old Testament things as applying to now. You know what I'm saying? How we can still learn from that. God's still the same God, but how he dealt with them right. is different than how he deals with us. That's right. But God is still the same God. Just how he deals with us is different. It's a different dispensation or administration. You know, but still we can learn from it because God's still the same. Just the conditions and circumstances have changed. That's all. You want me to read this last page? Um, yeah, dude, why not? Go ahead. Thus we see that the living word and the written word, sorry puppy, uh, cannot be separated. And we can understand also why they cannot be separated in the preaching of the word. To preach the written word without preaching Christ is not preaching at all. Neither is it done in the power of the spirit. When Paul went to Thessalonica, he, as his manner, manner was, was, reasoned with them out of the I scripture. love this part right here. Not to interrupt you. I, just, I love this part. As his manner was. Hold on. Just don't lose your place. At, if you read where, how his manner was, I'm sorry, dude. I'm not. I know we're talking about that little interruption thing. But as his <laughs> manner was, right? So, uh, what's the time? We're still good. We're 37 minutes. We're still good. You're freaking so, out the dog, bro. We're freaking out audience members, too, apparently, over here. Puppy. Can't handle a little bit too much <laughs> coffee or something. Um, but anyway, <laughs> as Paul's manner was. She's okay. Right now, buddy. Yeah. As his manner was. Well, after his conversion, how was his manner? If you think about this, like, historically, or look it up, right? Because you know, we're, we're, we're a biblical research uh, ministry. Yeah. Ministry. I was gonna say something. I don't know. What, what okay. I, I choked on the name of our ministry. I know. It was, I, that was that was great though. But mm. as his manner was, we look at the Book of Acts. We look at Romans. We look at Corinthians. You know. We look at Galatians. But you know, though we have those letters, right? What did Paul do? A lot of his acts are written in the Book of Acts. Do you know what I'm saying? In the Acts of the Apostles and things. So we look at that. His manner was he would go into the synagogues. And take the word for as it is written, because he was, you know, he went to the school of one Tyrannus. You know, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, yeah. but his he was wrong. His knowledge was wrong until until his conversion, and then it got unlocked, and God unlocked that knowledge. You know what I'm saying? But he went to the places that taught as, him wrong. That's right. But as his right. as his manner was, he would enter into the synagogue and always using the word, always reasoning with the word. Here, where Bullinger says, and you're going to pick it right back up. I'm sorry. Where it says he reasoned with uh, with them out of the scriptures. Uh, if you look that up, does he have it cited right there? 
I don't know. It says not as as is done today out of the newspaper. It says or with out of the preacher's own head or experience. I'm wanting to say it says without right there on Acts down at the bottom of that paragraph. Jay, pull that up right there. Just like let it float up. No, go up. Oh, Acts, Acts 17 one to three. Hold on. Uh, I just made a Why don't we just read the paragraph and look at that? Well, one. there's a spot where where he. <laughs> He says that he reasoned with them. Maybe it is. Open it up right there in the Word. Uh, double click on, on Act. Double click there. Boom. There you go. But it's just going to open a window like that, which is okay. There's a spot where he says where, where, where Bullinger, them without the Scriptures, the, uh, reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Right. He reasoned that he didn't go anywhere else. Right. He didn't use any, like Bullinger says, he didn't use any like newspapers, no period articles. Right. He didn't go to any modern... Tech, like any modern scientific journals of the time, he used only the word. Right. And he reasoned Jesus Christ with Old Testament word, too. You know what I'm saying? Because he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. That's what they did. But he did not end there. We are immediately told that this preaching consisted in opening and setting forth that Christ, the living word, must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ the Messiah. Acts 17, 1, 3. Yeah. 3. All right. Dude, that's probably the best news in the world. Uh, if the living word and the written word cannot be separated, we learn that in sitting down to the study of the word and words of God, it is to hear his voice, to choose that better part, to sit at Jesus' feet and hear his words. And it is only a part, uh, it is only a part. The best is to come when we shall behold his glory, the glory of our ascended Lord, as the glory of our incarnate Lord was beheld when on earth. Then in the future, as in the past, as now by the Holy Spirit, the wonderful word, our glorified Lord, will continue the blessed work which he began as our risen Lord expounding in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and will declare and make known the father to the saints who shall then have been gathered together unto him wow i can't believe i got through that he whole put thing. so and dude Woo. he put so much word there man dude he put so much word there like i don't know if you guys like watching this like wherever you're watching you guys watching at home i'm just gonna go with that phrase cause I, you know like they say it on tv or whatever <laughs> you guys watching, watching at home. home you know what i'm saying like billy graham says that stuff a lot but anyway so like he he compressed so much word in the last two little bg in the last two paragraphs right there yeah, we don't we don't even copyright or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but he puts he puts so much there, choosing that better part, Martha and Mary. It was the better part that they were sitting at Jesus Christ's feet and said that one instead of the one being encumbered about with much serving, you know what I'm saying? Where she goes to Jesus Christ and she goes, "I'll bid my sister. She comes and help me." And Jesus Christ, well, but your sister, she's chosen that better part because her sister Martha and Mary, whichever it <laughs> was, was sitting there. I think it was Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet when Martha was encumbered about with, with with much serving. But Mary had chosen that better part instead of running around trying to help everyone. She set almost like kind of self care to set and like hear the word of God at Jesus Christ's feet instead. So that's uh, excuse me, that's where that comes from. Uh, excuse me, this is only a part. The best is yet to come. We shall behold His glory. When you read that, dude, right there of our when we shall behold His glory. The glory of our ascended Lord, as the glory of our incarnate Lord was beheld when on earth, right? So, when Jesus Christ returns, right? Yeah. And shall descend from heaven with the, uh, with the trump of the archangel, right? Or with the trump of the, ar or the voice of the archangel, trump of God, right? And uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him, you know, and we'll be instantly changed as well. Meet the Lord in the air, right? Okay, well that, yes, we will be holding, we will behold his glory. But when that comes and judgment comes, does that apply for everyone? That's, not everyone's going to behold his glory, are they? To some people it's going to be 
to their own detriment. Some their people are going to be like, oh man. Their own destruction, demise, and hell. That's exactly yeah. right. Like, yeah, their own, their own shame. Some, there's some people trying to, oh, well, the, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess. And I'm just like, yeah, but he's that's exactly come right. Back. They didn't believe in their heart. They didn't, they, you know what I mean? They, they, they didn't. That believing believe, wasn't believe, there. Believe, don't be condemned. Don't believe, be condemned already in John 3, 16, 18, 19, whatever the rest of that chapter right yeah, there. Because God, God lays said, it out. Because it says in God's word, like, Jesus says, blessed, you, you believe because you see, but blessed right. is he who believes and doesn't see, dude. It's like, yeah. when he comes back and he's standing in front of our face, it's a little too late to jump on the bandwagon. He's back to take us home. That's right. He calls us home before, you know what I mean? Like, and that, That's right. And then, then right here in the last part of the paragraph, like we were talking about how Paul was reasoning out of the scriptures, Jesus Christ, right? He was using Old Testament. When Jesus Christ, uh, when he was crucified, right, and they put him in the ground for three days and three nights for the full 72 hours to be found to fulfill Jewish law. Right, right. right? He had to be so dead for That's three days. exactly right, right? And then and then God raised him from the dead, right? And he ascended, then, then manifested, you know, here on earth, right, to, the, to everyone else. And he was walking by the way with them, what he's mentioning here in Acts. And he... Uh, exp in quotation marks, expounding in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Okay? What word did he use? He didn't have the book of Acts. He didn't have the gospels, because that was current time. He didn't have Romans. He didn't have the church epistles. He didn't have the book of Revelation. What word did Jesus Christ have to expound, or to open, Expounding in Every, all the scriptures that everything the church it. had, the Old Testament. That's right. Everything had, the church had that he was had, denying that's him. Exactly right. He had the Old Testament law. He had the prophets. He had the Psalms. You know what I'm saying? He had Old Testament, the same stuff that Paul used. You know, and he was opening it up to the Jews. So the same things that they have still. There's Jesus Christ right there. Jesus Christ used Old Testament to, to open the scriptures and expound the things about himself. The same way Paul, as his manner was, going into the you know, synagogues and reasoning out of the scriptures. Those things about the Lord Jesus Christ of him having to suffer. He only had Old Testament too. Because the New Testament was currently being written. Was currently being lived. You know what I'm saying? Was currently being manifested at that time by God's divine power and grace. You know, it's just like that. Just like hit me, like wow, like that was they. That's what they both had, and Jesus Christ just used it. It was probably just you know for him, it, it's himself. So for him, it just would flow, just flow, flow, you know, because it was him. He was just using himself, like you know, flowing forth as his own nature and being. You know that's what right. I'm saying? I don't know. It's just it's amazing, dude. Because the more of the word that you know, you know. The greater picture of it you see, the more beauty in it that you see. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I don't know. I, I, I'm blessed to be doing this with you. And I'm sorry for interrupting you. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, dude. You know? No, dude. It's awesome. <clears throat> but this that's is where, definitely a blessing. This is where we are now. And we are at 46 minutes. That's a, I mean, that's basically where we wanted to be. So we are. Wrap it up. That's so in the good. book. And that's where are we at next? The, the next part is okay so the next part guys this is a heads up for the next video whenever one we get into the next one yeah it's going to be uh part two the one, one great, great subject, subject of, of the word. word we should do that more often bro that was so well, cool that really wasn't <laughs> scripted either we were just reading at the same time <laughs> but it's about christ and the word as a whole so during this section um if we he's bullinger's going to start getting into some to some structure and things in here no one's going to get lost it's, it's going no to be a little gonna, more class-like. It is. You, you might no, want to take notes and that's stuff. That's right. The first one, it's still introductory. This is still introductory, laying out some very foundational principles, but very necessary principles at the same time. Um, uh, and then after this, he's going to start going into further detail about, you know, dispensational truth and things like that, adhering to whom is written, um, chapter and verse headings be added by man, uh, punctuate, all these. Uh, it's... How to enjoy the Bible is a huge blessing for me. It really is. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah. like, you know, taking the class that was derived from it and I like seeing it. that. No, I, yeah, it it's a huge blessing for me. But in this next part. I'm not a school guy. I haven't been allowed to Well, I mean, hey, man, I'm not, things. you know, I'm not, I'm not a reader, either. man. Yeah. You can't tell. Yeah. So, Maybe. It's okay. We're getting there. You're getting, a lot, you're getting a lot better. God fixes a lot of things along the way, man. Come as you are. He just loves us too much to leave us like that. But Dude, he zapped my brain like electroshock therapy, man. And was like, you're going to be happy now, dude. And I'm like, 
Sometimes he'll reach in and just makes a little tweak. It's real weird. I'm telling you. But it's like 40 years of being like, uh, as, a, like as, a little, uh, as a little preview of this next part. It's awesome. Of part two, the one great subject of the word, Christ and the word as a whole. Okay, um, I have, you know, I've been through this book, parts of it, and things like that. So what we can't expect from this, uh, he's going to open up a whole lot of structure, but at the same time, uh, Bullinger's going to run through, and he's going to give you a rundown. This is how you're going to find him in this book. This is how he is in this one, this one, this one, this one. Not every single time. Not everything, every one of the books, every time he's mentioned. Right. He's Because he encourages people to do the same. To do your own research, you know, to build your own relationship with God. You know, and that's what that's where we, you know, we stand on the same page with that as well. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's always about the word. It's always the word, the word, the word, man, you know? Yeah, we like, can't fish for you forever because we're going to die someday. And then that's the right. Lord, we get to go home. That, and then yeah. you're going to be like, like, hey, I can't watch this podcast anymore. And I mean, our kids are going to take it over, but you're not going to be re- able to relate to them because they're going to be really young and annoying and you're going to be really old. So you want to know how to fish for yourself. <laughs> so when our kids take over, you can feed yourself until you die and go to the glorious gates of the kingdom of God. And your kids can watch our annoying kids do what we're doing now. Yeah, It'll be amazing. Praise God. We'll, but we'll pick this one back up. It's probably going to be a couple weeks or something. Yeah. Um, We'll let you guys know, but it's been a blessing. So am I going to pray us out? Pray us out, man. Right, let's go. Lord God, Father in heaven, we thank you for the fellowship that we've been having. We thank you for everything you're doing for us and the opportunities and the blessings that you're giving unto us. We thank you for the infallibility of your word. We thank you for using your son, Jesus Christ, cleansing us from all sin and bringing us into your adoptive family so we can you know, enter into your household and enter into your presence every single day, all day long, as we renew our minds. We thank you for being with us. We ask you to guide us in the days ahead and everyone watching. We ask you just to guide us all. Lead us not into temptation. Open up, open up each and every one of our paths. As your word says, you know, let us, let us acknowledge you in our ways and you'll instruct our paths. So let us do that. Help us all to remind, remind us to do that. And then whenever, you know, you, you open that way and show us your way, make it, make it plain, make it clear. And if we have fear or doubt, help thou our unbelief, right? Believing comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Help us to put the word of God and your word in our hearts and minds and walk out on it in every day coming. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Awesome stuff. All right, guys. We love you. A double whammy this Sunday. Next week is going to be a single recording. Yeah, it'll be a single next week. week after that, it'll be another double whammy. Uh, now we might miss one there towards the end of April, but I'm trying not to. Right after that, you know what I'm talking about, oh, man. We're going out of town. Yeah, for yeah. The Super trip. fun ministry yeah, trip. For sure. We got a, like a 14 or 15 person trip. We're taking yeah. a couple hours away. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we'll, I'm sure, talk more yeah, about it's, that it's, conference come Tuesday. Yeah, it's fir- first ever ministry yeah. trip. Like, I'm super pumped it's about it, man. It's going to be fantastic, man. It's going to be fantastic. Man, praise God for everything he's doing in our lives and yours. We love you, fam. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple days.